Welcome to Moodsters Motors. This is a short update on the projects that I've got ongoing at the moment. Just over a year ago I completed the project of the CB400 twin automatic. This project went well with some difficulties on the way but it was a successful conclusion and I was very pleased with the outcome. That project has now moved on. I have three other motorcycle projects on the go at the moment and I just wanted to give an update on how these projects were progressing. First of all we have the Suzuki GS1100G. It was a nice little runaround for me for a while. Unfortunately age has begun to weary it, some corrosion on the frame, there were some sheared bolts, some rusted and seized components, locks with missing keys. It generally needed a good tidy up. Right, this is the last of the eight studs that have to be removed to get the exhaust off. Everything else of the exhaust has been removed, apart from this one stud, or bolt I should say, that's got to come off to release this last clamp and the last part of the exhaust system. It appears to be quite badly seized in there. I've tried using Allen keys, because these are Allen bolts to come out but I cannot get it to turn. Well, I can't see any other way about it. The only thing I can see to do is to drill that head off. I can't... You know, there's like no other way that I can think of that would remove that belt. <laughs> Bolt. Remove the belt as well if you want, but... The next one is the Yamaha XJ400Z, which is a grey import bike. It was really made for the Japanese market only. It's always had a problem with Kolb starting. I've now decided that the cylinder head and cylinder block will need to come off. Camshafts are out. Next is to release all the cap head nuts to release the cylinder head. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve, they will be a 14 millimeters head size. Uh, all the water is drained out so I don't have to worry about any water coming out of here. I think I ought to take a tie and tie all these suppressor caps up out of the way while I uh, get the cylinder head off. Finally is my most recent acquisition. This was one I just couldn't resist. It is a salvage vehicle. It was in a collision and does need some repairs. These are not major repairs in terms of the structure or integrity of the chassis of the vehicle. These are really mechanical faults to do with the engine as well as some ancillary repairs. So what could be a good working bike? This is the bike as it was received off the truck when delivered. And as you can see, there's various scuff marks, damage to the handlebars, damage to the screen, damage to the fairing. There are chip marks out of the paintwork. The fairing mount seems to be twisted. The radiator is bent and twisted and crushed against the exhaust pipe. There is a broken mirror as well as a broken mirror mount. Of course there is a broken indicator almost inevitably. The mirror mount to the left hand side has sheared completely away from the bike but the main problem is the breaking of the starter motor mount and the loss of the intermediate gear. I've started to receive replacement components starter motor the upper engine crankcase unfortunately some replacement mirrors I got were broken on receipt and had to be returned right that's 
the bracket on. Two bolts tightened into place. Now we need to put the clocks back up. And that's quite simple. I just need to make sure that as I pull it up, I get this wiring up over this here. And there's four pins go into these rubber mounts. Hopefully this is all going to fall back together perfectly. Okay, we've got the radiator off. Quite badly twisted as you may be able to see. But we say a low impact at that corner. Really twisted it quite badly. Crushed that inlet pipe to virtually nothing. And it's also been crushed upwards by the looks of it. All things out of kilter. That's the bad news. To take it out, I had to... To take it out, I had to remove the fan, which is just held on on those three mountings. Oops, sorry, there, there, there. Some lower damage there as well. So the whole thing has been dragged apart. And I am getting a replacement radiator anyway. I think it's worth pointing out that as clean as this bike looked, there's a lot of dirt gathered in behind the radiator. It doesn't look like it was cleaned too fastidiously. I've sent for a pair of replacement bars. I say a pair. Replacement handlebars, because of the bend in this, there's actually a kink in that joint there, which is um, where the handlebars have bent out of line. I did think originally that this side was bent as well, but I now doubt that. It's quite clear when you look from the side that the far end handlebar is bent back much further than the near side. Uh, I've ordered a set of replacement bars, but they're not Honda Originals. So I don't know if they're going to act as good replacements for these, because I've got a feeling that these switch clusters are actually pinned into the bars. They're located with little pins, I think. Also, the bar end weights. Obviously, they screw into something. I've got a feeling that what they screw into is welded into the handlebars as standard. So I may not be able to fit the bar end weights onto the replacements, we'll have to see. I'm very excited about the CB1300 project. It is a very beautiful bike and I'm confident I can revive this into a, a good working condition again. The project has moved on a little from the images you see here and I hope to be starting a series on the CB1300 very soon. Unfortunately, my excitement over this project has pushed aside the other two which have been waiting a number of years and really should be my priority.